Hi, my name is Eddie. I'm 73 years old and in a few days I'll be getting a bone marrow transplant because I have acute myeloid leukemia. It's uh, kind of scary getting ready, but on the other hand, I'm as well prepared as I could be and this is my only chance for a cure. I'm definitely one of the older patients. Uh, wasn't that long ago that somebody my age would not have been considered for a bone marrow transplant, but fortunately, given the uh, advances in medicine, uh, they tell me I'm gonna do okay. I'm walking a mile, doing lots around the floor. I have two tenths of a mile to go. One mile. 26 minutes. Today is day minus one, meaning that tomorrow I'll be receiving my stem cell transplant. Uh, the past few days I've been receiving chemotherapy and tomorrow I will receive total body irradiation. The purpose of both of these is to destroy my bone marrow so as to make room for the implanted stem cells to engraft and hopefully be able to uh, start making blood cells for me. Um, it's been a fairly easy week uh, with the chemotherapy and one of the reasons for that is because of my age, the uh, chemotherapy regimen and the radiation regimen for tomorrow are both uh, less intensive than they would use for a younger patient or a patient with fewer comorbidities. Uh, but in spite of the fact that uh, they're less intensive, they still should do what is necessary and that is to destroy my bone marrow and make room for the transplant itself. The only downside, if you will, of having the less intensive chemotherapy and radiation uh, regimen is that it's possible that some leukemia cells will remain even after these treatments. The idea is, and it's on, sometimes it seems like science fiction to me, but I know that it's true, uh, that once the implanted stem cells are engrafted, they should recognize any leukemia cells that remain as foreign and attack them and kill them off so that eventually I should be leukemia free and cured of AML. Fortunately, I'm in good shape. I spent a lot of time preparing for my hospitalization, going to physical therapy, going to the gym regularly, uh, because I know that once here, uh, being the strongest I can be is gonna be a big help to me. So every day I get out and walk around the floor, uh, usually, uh, somewhere between three to four miles. Uh, that's a lot of laps, but it's the right thing to do. They also have uh, a uh, treadmill and some stairs if I wanna uh, use that for exercise. They also have a stationary bike that they can bring into my room that I can ride. And I have a yoga mat and some free weights uh, to work with as well. So the more active I am, the easier it will be to make it through this process. And so uh, I'm making a point of having time every day uh, in order to exercise, keep myself in good shape physically and psychologically. I'm in a terrific room. I have an incredible view of uh, the east side of the uh, city with a gorgeous view of Mount Hood when the weather is nice, and it is today. Today has been the most spectacular day since I've been here. Uh, the sunrise was amazing, and Mount Hood is in full view today. Really lifts your spirits. You know, this is, this is pretty serious business, getting a stem cell transplant. It takes a lot, of, a lot of courage and a lot of strength, and you really have to stay focused on the goal, what you're trying to accomplish, but it really pays to have a good sense of humor and 
Fortunately, I have a friend who went through this process six years ago, and uh, he's a pretty funny guy. He's always got a joke to tell. So every day he sends me a, a joke uh, that he encourages me to tell my nerves, which I haven't done yet, but I enjoy his uh, sense of humor. So the other day he sent me one that goes like this. It's really dumb, but you know, what can you do? Knock, knock. Who's there? Hippa. Hippa who? I can't tell you. See what I mean? So Eddie's just finished his full body radiation and we're back going up to the room for a four o'clock transplant. Are you glowing? I'm glowing and I can <laughs> see through walls. <laughs> do you need help getting up from the chair or are you yeah, okay? Yeah, uh, we just put the brake on, okay? okay? There we go. Well, it's uh, day zero, the day I've been waiting for for months. Uh, my stem cells will be here in about a half an hour. So today I, I guess is my birthday and my wife has made cookies and I've been hearing from all of my friends and family. And in fact, uh, my son and my daughter are gonna join us in a half an hour on FaceTime so they can be here for the event because they, they both live out of town. And we have cookies for the doctors and the nurses. There'll be a crowd here and there'll be a big celebration so happy birthday to me. Here come, here come the stem cells. Can we have a ride? Eddie's about to get his new cells. Whoa. It's a small bag. So it is, this is the bag if you want to have a picture of it. What was it, 394? The first part here is going to be kind of slowly trickling because of the saline that's kind of mixed with it. Mm -hmm. Here they go. But it started. No. Oh. I can take this off for a little bit. I'm going to leave that one because it'll be oh, hard to back. Such a habit to do that. It's all right, I'll. Today is day plus four, and so far, so good. I'm really actually surprised at just how good I feel and how easily I have adapted to being in the hospital. Some things that were shared with me and that I've read about before I came into the hospital uh, that I think have been very helpful. I was told by a friend who went through a stem cell transplant six years ago don't wear a hospital gown, bring your own clothes, you'll feel more like a human being. And that's exactly what I did, and I, I think he's so right. It's nice to not be in a hospital gown every day, just put on clothes like I would to start any other day. I also brought a boom box with me, a small one, so that I can uh, listen to music, and my family has been great sending me playlists. For uh, several months before the transplant was actually scheduled and I arrived at the hospital, I had meetings with my transplant doctor. And every meeting that we had with her, she would lay out a roadmap for me and she would actually hand draw um, notes so that I would be able to refer to them in a way that was very meaningful because it, especially now since the transplant, she's given me 
an indication of what each day will look like, what drugs I'm going to be given, what I'm likely to experience in the way of side effects. And uh, even though she's not here on, on the floor uh, right now and may not be back uh, before I'm discharged, the doctors who are looking after me are following that roadmap. And uh, it's been really helpful for me. I like to know what's coming. And so being able to refer to that today, for example, and know what drugs are gonna be administered tomorrow and the purpose of those drugs and the side effects of those drugs makes it easier for me to be prepared and to uh, not have surprises. Uh, so for the last two days, I've been given a uh, intensive chemotherapy drug, the purpose of which is to suppress the early, um, the early stem cells that wake up and will recognize that they're in a different body than they came from and to prevent them from doing any damage to um, either organs or other parts of uh, my body that would be at risk if they were to just run wild. So the chemotherapy suppresses them and uh, I've been getting that since yesterday, two days. Uh, this is a very, unfortunately, it's a very toxic medication, requires that I be very careful um, about emptying my bladder every hour so that it doesn't do any damage. Um, so that unfortunately has interrupted my sleep, but I knew that that was gonna be the case. My doctor told me to expect that. So I'm thinking that I'm gonna be in the hospital for a total of a month. And you know, that's a long time to be stuck in a bed. So I uh, appreciate the fact that I'm still able to get up and walk and do some exercises. It's, and take care of myself. And the food here is actually pretty good. Bon appetit. A few days ago, I took a fall, totally unrelated to the transplant, but uh, that's why I have the walker. I broke a rib when I fell and also banged up my hand. Fortunately, neither of those interfere whatsoever with the stem cell transplant process, so it's full steam ahead. Today, when my doctors rounded, I got the best news, the news I've been waiting for since I decided to do the stem cell transplant and since I've been in the hospital now almost two and a half weeks. This is the message that I sent to my family today, and I thought I would share it with you. My medical team just rounded. There is solid evidence to support engraftment of my donor's stem cells and new blood cells are being produced. This is the best news I could have hoped for this early in the process. This morning's labs showed that my ANC level was at 170. That's fabulous given that for the last four days, it's been zero. When it reaches 500, that's when I'll be eligible for discharge. Still well below normal, but that number will increase steadily as the days go by. It's day plus 13. I've been in the hospital now for 18 days. I expected to be here for about a month, but I'm going home today. My ANC count went through the roof today. My white blood cell count is up. My platelets are up and I'm being discharged this afternoon. While I've been here, I've been reading this book, Living Medicine. It's a history of the stem cell transplant process. It goes into a lot of the research. It's a really terrific book. Whether you have any uh, interest in science or not, it's just a totally great human success story about the people who made it possible
for those of us who are going through the transplant process, particularly those of us who are older, to be successful. This is a long journey. This is just the beginning of my journey. I have a long way to go, but I'm really encouraged by what has happened over these last 18 days. If you're on this journey, uh, either having started the stem cell transplant or if you have that scheduled coming up, if you're a family member with a loved one who has AML who is also on this journey, I know it's hard, I know it's long, but I hope you'll be successful. I feel like this is one of the greatest days of my life. I was worried coming into the hospital. I've been a little scared along the way, but on day plus 13, I'm out of here. Good afternoon, everyone. It's day 19. A few days ago, I started losing my hair. You can tell that that's pretty much complete now. Um, and then on day 17, I developed a rash, uh, spoke with my provider, and they're treating it with a cortisone cream. Uh, this morning, day 19, uh, I woke up uh, feeling as if my face was quite puffy, my eyes swollen, and uh, tomorrow I'll be in clinic and they'll have a chance to take a look at it and decide what needs to be done next. Overall, I'm feeling really good. I'm at home. I have my pup here with me, Charlie, who is looking after me well. And uh, overall, I think things have been going pretty well. The GDHD was something I expected. In fact, I expected to have some evidence of it in the hospital, but didn't. So. The rash doesn't surprise me, and I know that my doctors will get it cleared up pretty quickly, but otherwise I feel great.